name is Chris Calabugas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking to innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you watch on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, last week, Tim Cook came out and announced Apple Vision Pro. Da, 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 da. That's right, folks. I've been saying for the longest time, the longest time, that if any company is going to be able to do augmented reality, virtual reality, goggles, glasses, replacements for the iPhone, eventual replacements for smartphones, it would be Apple. And it's taken them, what was it, eight years, ten years, or whatever to come up with this. I think I mentioned before in last week's show that a bunch of our folks at Yahoo actually came up with an original, one of the original patents for augmented reality glasses. We called it a reality overlay device, and we came up with a bunch of patents on the exact same thing that Apple came out with. But I digress. I don't own the patent, so it is not for me to do anything about it. But we did come up with these ideas back in 2009. 2009, it's taken almost 15 years for this stuff to become reality. And a lot of people are complaining. They're looking at this thing, and it's a giant headset. You've probably seen it if you're in the tech space. And it's got this band that goes around the back of your head, which is very well designed, very commercial, very consumer friendly, very Apple. And the little gestures you can do to try to say things. And then if it detects another human being in the room, it, it sort of the translucency goes away so you can see the other person. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a work of art right now. And, of course, it's probably heavy, and it probably doesn't look very... It doesn't feel very good. You probably can't wear it for hours. And the price tag is an astronomical $3,500. And some people say, oh, that's an astronomical $3,500. But if you ask me, I don't think that's so astronomical. If you ask me, that's actually not a bad price. If you think about what you're actually getting for this thing, it's a computer. It's connected to the Internet. It has the ability to give you a completely new reality. You wouldn't need that big screen TV anymore. You can watch big screen TV on this thing. You can watch movies on this thing. You can, if you think about all of the, your laptop, keyboards, if you think about all of the equipment that this thing will replace, 3500 is an, is nothing compared to all the devices that are around you right now that something like this could replace and give you an experience unlike any other. Now, I haven't worn it. I haven't tried it. I'm not going to be one of the first to plonk down 3500 I might. I might not. I haven't decided yet. But that's something that's amazingly innovative. Don't you think it's cool? And I think it's a great leap forward. There's so many people who are detracting about this stuff. But it's the same people who are detracting with Google Glass. Google Glass was the problem, though. I mean, it, did, it had a tiny little interface. It just didn't do what it needed to do. These may do what we need them to do, to provide us a mixed reality, augmented reality, virtual reality interface that is actually useful and commercial grade. It's key that it's commercial grade. Because if it's not commercial grade, then it's not, you know, just a bunch of techies are gonna buy it, like me, and nobody else is gonna use it. We need commercial grade devices like this. And of course the thing's giant. And of course the thing is heavy. But this is V1. I mean, if you looked at <laughs> uh, iPhones and other devices from Apple, V1 of anything is pretty, pretty crappy. But when time goes by, they refine the design, and eventually it's going to look like a regular pair of glasses on your face. And it's going to have all that technology miniaturized and packaged even smaller. And as a beginning, it's a great beginning. I think it's a fantastic beginning, and I think it's great. And a lot of people were complaining, why there's no mention of AI? Because, of course, AI is the flavor of the week. Everybody's got to talk about AI. They talked about AI. There was plenty of AI in the presentation. There was plenty of AI all throughout the announcements from Apple last week. It was just, they just didn't use those initials. They just didn't use the term artificial intelligence. But you could hear all of the elements of AI were run throughout everything. The to new experiences that were going to be developed were all driven by AI. You could tell. They were just weren't being obnoxious about it like everybody else. AI this, AI that. Let me get a .ai domain so people can think I'm into the AI space. 
By the way, if you're still interested in AI news, don't forget to go to AIDaily.us, AIDaily.us, is, which is my new website, and blog, podco, podcast, podcast on AI news daily, curated by myself, yours truly. So if you're still interested in AI, go there, which of course you are, so you will. Link is below. But where was I? Oh yeah, the Vision Pro, it's a great device. Very innovative, very interesting. Now the question is, will it be the same kind of thing as the rest of media? Will will it will you be allowed to do things that eh, are a little untoward? Is it going to be like Meta? I mean, what's the, one of the big downsides about Meta and the in a metaverse was that it was like a, living in a cartoony world. You couldn't do anything like a little unpopular or a little uh, you know edgy or a little you know, adult, let's say, in the metaverse. Are you going to be able to do this in, in Apple's device? I'm sure you can. I'm sure you were going to have immersive experiences on this device that we might not, we might not have had, we wouldn't have in the metaverse, because that's a sanitized version of the world. And these sanitized versions of the world, I think we need less of these. I think we have to stop dumbing ourselves down with these sanitized versions of the world and get closer to the authenticity of what it's like to be a human being on this planet in this year at this place in time. Because it's phenomenal what's coming. The technologies that are coming. The breakthroughs that are coming. The stuff that's going to be happening is amazing. And this Vision Pro is just one of the examples of the amazing things that are forthcoming. There's so many people poo-pooing everything that's coming out. But if you ask me, it's super exciting. All of this new technology that's coming out, we can use it in so many different ways. We can use it to the detriment of humanity, or we can use it to improve humanity. Which will it be? It's our decision. We're the ones who get to do that. Now, there's plenty of other people in power who might want to decide it should go this way or should go that way. But while the power is in our hands, and if the power is in our hands, we should be the ones to make the decision. Let's use this to improve humanity. Let's use AI to make things better for humans, not worse for humans. If people you lose their job due to AI, then let's figure out new jobs that only humans can do, because there's plenty of jobs out there that only humans can do. If it's a job that a human is doing and an AI could do it better, then let's let AI do it better. I'm ranting again, but I wanted to talk about the Vision Pro. I don't know what else there is to say about it. One of these days I'm going to try it on and see what it's like, and I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. It may not be the same kind of virtual reality or immersive reality that we'd all like to see, but I think it's great. And there's plenty of detractors who say, well, okay, this is great. It's just another device to make us sit on the couch and do nothing. We're human beings, folks. We have big brains and we have the ability to make choices. Nobody is forcing you to sit on the couch and wear your Vision Pro all day long. Sure, it's compelling, but we should have the strength and the fortitude as human beings to make decisions to put those devices down and go out into the forest. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.